What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is going to be the review for um, Life After Lo Love After Lockup, Season 3, Episode 23. So they're going to go on a two-week hiatus, I guess, for Christmas. That's what most people do. I guess they skip over and they, um, they go into Christmas. So, listen. We start off with, um, I took notes, y'all. I took notes, y'all. I don't normally take notes. I took notes, so... We have Amber and Puppy, because Vince, I'm not even going to add Vince to this equation, because Vince, we ain't even seen him, well, we, we hear him this episode, but it's Amber and Puppy. So Amber's picking up Puppy from, um, from jail, a child, she at the jailhouse, and then she get a phone call telling her that she got to go to the courthouse. Now, we never find out why she can't come out the jailhouse, she had to go to the courthouse, but for whatever reason, that's where her, her um, she was released from, and Puppy said, hell, they didn't tell her either. They just kidnapped her and took her to the courthouse, so she don't know... But I'm sure she know, but she ain't say, because there's a reason why you ain't come out to jail. You had to come out to courthouse, but whatever. Amber, let me say this before I keep going any further, because I'm going, I might forget to say it. Amber, get away from puppy and your mama, okay? You keep saying how determined you are that you're not going back to jail, but I'm telling you that puppy and your mama is on that, and they, okay? Now, you looking good. You got a nice car with tinted windows. You got you a Michael Kors, you know, um, coat. You you got you some nice shades. You got a good job, okay? You look like, you you know, you, you had a bunch of stuff waiting for Miss Puppy coming out of jail. Like, you look like you're really doing some good things. And I don't want you to get sidetracked because, honestly, I just don't have a good feeling. I just don't have a good feeling. But anyway, so, you know... Puppy is ready to be like, listen, we was in jail. We used to get it in in jail. She said whenever Puppy got drunk, they would make out and they would dance. She said they used to get drunk off the hand sanitizer. Now, I know that for some of y'all, y'all going to be like, ugh, hand sanitizer. Oh, my goodness, what? But when I worked at the jail, and, then, you know, I was at a juvenile facility. I wasn't even at, like, the big boy jail. I was at a juvenile facility. And this was before COVID. We had to take the hand sanitizer. Well, not we, because I was on the school side. But I'm saying the guards... They had to take the hand sanitizer out of the um, out of the the common areas because it was a kid who came through there. And he was an alcoholic, and baby, he started drinking that hand sanitizer because he was so desperate to give him some alcohol. So I have heard of that before, although I was like, "You got to be desperate to drink hand sanitizer," but neither here nor there. Um. So, it sounds like Puppy is ready to be on some, okay, it's me and you. Remember all that stuff we said when we was locked up? How when we get on the other side, what it's going to be like, how it's going to be? And Puppy and, and um, Amber is like, slow your roll, Puppy. Let's take this one day at a time. Let's see how this work out. Because I know what I had said when we was locked up and I was drunk. But I might not mean that right now. So, let's, let's just chill out. So, of course, they go get something to eat, and while they're, while they're eating, you know, puppy changing to some real clothes and everything. So, while they're eating, puppy brings up Vince. Now, y'all remember Vince, and I, I I only saw this in, like, the, 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 the replays. But remember, Vince had this whole scheme um, that he was going to, um, you know, use, um, he was going to use, um, I guess his military benefits, he was going to adopt Puppy, use her as a dependent, and then he claimed he was going to split the money with Amber and Puppy, right? Now, I don't know how the hell that was even going to happen when Puppy was not a minor, but whatever. He said he did it. They said it happened. Now, I don't know why the fuck they are discussing a felony on a whole TV show and all of them got charges. I don't know, but whatever. So, they, so Puppy was like, Puppy said the same thing to Amber that her mother said, I don't understand why you couldn't make that work. I mean, you just couldn't sleep with him. You couldn't make yourself sleep with him. And, you know, Amber keeps trying to tell these people, listen, hell no, no, hell no, no. Like, no, dude was crazy. I wasn't going to do it. Like, and she told Puppy, she said, you know, you're more than welcome to go do it, okay? You're more than welcome to call him and, and sleep with him and do whatever you feel like you need to do. But no, ma'am, I wasn't going to do it. It wasn't happening over here. And I said, good for you, Amber, because... I just think that is some real disrespectful, raunchy stuff for them to be sitting there trying to get you to sleep with this man. Anyway, but that's why I say, Amber, you need to get away from them because they are still on that hustle. They ain't trying to go legit. They on the hustle, okay? Um. 
So then, so then they end up calling Vince, talking about some, if you getting paid for me, um, then we want part of that money. Then we need half of that money. If, we, if you getting paid for me, then I want my money. I want my money. And he told her, he said, listen, then you got to take me to court. Go on and get you a good, a good lawyer and do your best. Hit me with your best shot. I said, oh, okay, Vince. <laughs> he said, you better do the best you can. <laughs> Figure you, you think you going to do that. Okay. You let me know. <laughs> do the best you can. I said, oh. So, um, then they were like, well, do you think they're going to let us live together? Because remember, Amber is living at Puppy's mom's house. And basically, normally, unless you're related, y'all can't live together. And so, um, I mean, of course, if it comes down to it, I mean, that's Puppy mom's house. But they was like, well, maybe we might have to get married so that, you know, they, we would have to live together. I mean, we would be able to live together. So I said, oh, so it'll be all right for y'all to be together if it's about, you know, anyway, don't get me going there. Anyway, so that's them, child. Lord, then we have Sean and Destiny. Let me tell you something. Shows like this remind you of the, the caliber of people in this world. I think sometimes we get so caught up living in our own bubble and our own sense of morality and our own level of what's right and what's wrong that we forget that there are some scummy ass horrible people in this world and destiny is one of them and let me just be honest okay destiny is one of them destiny won't tell sean where she is left in the middle of the night packed up all her shit took his car took his credit card she calls him in the middle of the night because he sleeps so it had to be late i ain't gonna say the middle of the night but clearly it was not a decent hour because his ass was asleep wakes him up in the middle of the night still won't tell him where he is where she is talking about you know that she just needed to get away and he was like well why did you take all your stuff and she said because you know i might not come back you know i gotta go to court and this that and the other mind you this man still has a bail a, a bond out on her for fifty thousand dollars he won't she won't even tell him whether she's gonna come to court or not and after all of that she gonna say can you send me some money Can you send me some money? But here's the sad thing. His dumb ass did it. So I guess, I mean, he did it. Which, of course, she knew he would. So later on in the episode, we see her. She's still at her sister's house. She invites a friend over. She texting with some other dude. Or maybe it's not a dude. But she flirting and texting. You know, talking about some. Sean wanted to lie to me. He wasn't being honest with me. And so it is what it is. You know, two can play that game. She's still using his damn credit card. Ordering pizza on his credit card and all this other stuff. And she basically telling the friend, like, listen... He wasn't who I thought he was. He lied to me about talking to his baby's mom. He lied to me about this. He lied to me about that. And I just had to figure out that that's, you know, where I want to be and who I really want to be with. Then, um, court is in like two days. So, um, Sean gets an alert on his, um, phone, a fraud alert, basically asking him, was this his charge? You know, is this your charge? Is this what... You know you wanted to do or whatever and um he calls the credit card company to get as much information as he can and the guy was like well i ain't really supposed to be telling you all this but he lets him know like yes this was a 23 dollars charge for a pizza um and here's the address that i guess he had the address where the pizza was going i don't know but he ended up getting the address. So Shonda booked him a plane ticket, honey. He on his way down there to California. Now, here's what's crazy. If she got to show up for court in two days, like, I don't know how I would play that. Because you don't want to piss her off so that she don't go to court. But then you want to make sure that she does show up for court. So I feel like I don't know how I would play that. That's a very precarious situation you in, Sean. I don't know how to play that. But anyway, that's what we left off with the two of them, hunty. So then we have crazy-ass Andrea and Lamar. Listen, let me tell you something. Andrea done packed up her churn to take them swimming. She said, I'm taking y'all to a pool at a house that I'm trying to sell. Her son gonna say, is that legal? She said, well, that nobody will ever find out.
first of all, I'm sure the people have neighbors. And I'm sure they know that the house is for sale. So when they start seeing a bunch of people swimming in the damn pool of a house that's for, on the market that's for sale, I mean, somebody could just call the daggone police. That's, that's, that's all I'm saying. Somebody could call the police. I don't know. Two, I mean, I know you want to do something nice for your kids, but what are you what are you teaching your kids? You and Lamar are just crazy as hell. So anyway, they're swimming, having a good time, and... Um, Andrea says, you know, she said, Tennyson, I know you feel like I've been pressuring you about going on a mission. He was like, yeah, you have. She said, okay, well, here's the thing. Because she says she acknowledges that maybe it wasn't right that her and Lamar be fighting in front of each other all the time. And she definitely understands where he's coming from. And she said, that's our fault because we should not have been doing that in front of, in front of the kids. And so it is our fault that Tennyson feels that way. So she says, you know, you know, she's from Ghana, and that's where she wanted Tennyson to do his mission. So she said, well, let's do a family mission, and let's go to Ghana. You know, she said it's been a lot, you know, it's been a really long time since I've been back um, to Ghana. And, you know, and the kids were really excited, and they were happy, and, you know, they were going back to, you know, going back to Ghana. She, they were like, so we're going to get to meet our grandmother and our aunts, you know, family we never met. So it was cool. And then why Priscilla going to say... So is um my sister going with us? I forgot to go name. Is my sister going with us? Because she's part of the family too. Child Andrea gonna say. Who who told her about I think Shantae is the girl name. Who who told her about Shantae? <laughs> Look, Tennyson and the other girl was looking at each other like, I ain't mean tell that. She said, Priscilla, who told you about Shantae? Now the one thing that I did like about Andrea, she told her, she said, You are not in trouble. She said, please understand, you're not in trouble. You didn't do anything wrong. Who told you about Shantae? So, who told her about Shantae? Daddy took me to meet her. Well, when, when did you meet her? And she said, you're not in trouble. Because, of course, now the girl's crying and she upset. You're not in trouble. But I, I need to know. Who? How'd you find out? Well, Daddy took me to go meet her, but he told me not to say anything. It was a secret. So then she gonna look at the other kids and was like, did y'all know? And they were like, well, yeah, I mean, we found out a couple of days ago. And y'all didn't tell me either? She was like, so what kind of what kind of father teaches his kids to lie to the mother? Like, why are you teaching your children to lie to me? Like, that is not cool. So. And she ain't wrong. I told y'all that, that Lamar was wrong as two left feet. For making that girl lie to her mama. That that he was wrong as two left feet. I, I, I said it and I meant it and I, I'm here for it. Then. Then. Excuse me y'all. Um. So then she gonna tell the kids. Now this was the other stupid thing. I want you to get all of y'all stuff together and I want y'all to call an Uber and go home because I'm going to go see Lamar. So you're going to leave your kids, three black kids, swimming in a pool illegally in a house that's on the market. That's where you're going to leave them? That was a good idea? You thought that was a good idea? Leave them right there. Okay, then. All right. Okay. So, she rolls up on Lamar. Lamar, now, Lamar down to the cousin house. You know, the dude that we done met. Dula, Dulo, Dulo. And she immediately starts getting physical. She immediately rolls up on him and wants to fight him and tries to get physical. Dulo got to break it up, and she starts trying to get physical with him. And in the minute... He tries to break it up, and he's pulling her back. They're, they're trying to beat me. They're teaming up on me. Y'all are teaming up on me. And I'm like, woman, do you know how dangerous what you're doing is? Y'all are sitting outside in the middle of the hood, according to you, in the middle of the hood, and you're sitting there claiming that these two big-ass black men are attacking you. Are you crazy? First of all, you rolled up on them, so you was wrong. That's number one. Number two... I get it, you mad. I would be mad too. And you have every right to be mad. Let's be clear. You have every right to be mad. 
but you can't be physical. I said this last season when she attacked him over them damn condoms. Like, y'all y'all like to play real funny with these double standards. Now, if he had rolled up on her like that, everybody would be writing we TV and y'all be wanting to protest, and y'all be wanting to, like, it'd be a whole nother conversation. But now, all of a sudden, it's cool. Whatever. She finally ended up leaving. Lamar was like, see, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, and his cousin told him he was wrong. His cousin was like, what you did was stupid. But he said, but at the end of the day, she still, um, she still, um, you know, came up there real violent. He was like, hell, I don't even want to go home now. And I don't mean no harm, Lamar, but you, you should, you shouldn't go back home. Mm -mm. Nope. Not right now, bruh. Not right now. So, Michael and Sarah, listen, theirs was easy breezy. Basically, Malcolm, you know, was leaving. Now, all this took place over a weekend, I guess, that happened with them. But, and Malcolm basically, I feel like Malcolm broke up with Sarah. Because basically what Malcolm said is he got some things to think about. That, you know, a lot went down in a little bit of time. And he saw some things that he wasn't real comfortable with. And so, he realizes that he got some thinking to do. He, got, he really got some thinking to do. And he got to figure some stuff out. And, of course, as soon as, just as... Malcolm is pulling off. Who come pulling up is Michael. Child. Anyway, whatever. Moving on. And Michael said, I see Malcolm. I see what Malcolm trying to do, but at the end of the day, that's my wife. I said, whatever. Y'all know how I feel about Michael, so I ain't even giving that. I'm not giving that no more energy or invitation. So, we have Chevelle and Quaylen. Now, Quaylen is still down in Texas. He said he's been there for two weeks. He working at the barber shop that his mother introduced him to the barber. He got a chair. It looks like he got a chair. But he got the first chair. And everybody who know that the first chair, that's the, he said, only people I'm allowed to do is bald people. It wouldn't say people who don't, bald people, people who got bald haircuts and something else. But he's working, you know, and he, they saw, showed him sweeping up the floor. He played, he, he paying his due diligence. And we saw him talking to the fellas, telling them what happened with Chevelle. And he admit, he admitted, he finally admitted that this was a woman that he was flirting with. He said, she lived in Chicago, so he was like, we never had sex. Like, yeah, that text message said whatever it said, but the girl don't even live in Kansas City. Never had sex with her before. What you probably did was send her a dick pic. That's probably what you did. But he said, we never had sex, um, but that he really wants to be with Chevelle and that he know he messed up and he understands why she's not speaking to him, but he gonna do whatever he gotta do to get her back because, you know, he really, that's who he wanna be with. That's his boo. That's his girl. Now, his boys at the barbershop told him, listen, bruh, you just getting out of jail. You need to sow your wild oats before you settle down with this woman. Like, it's all cool, you know, to want to be with her, but you might need to look into some other options, you know. He said, so you saying I should go to Chicago? They was like, I mean, you can go to Chicago, but we got women right. You ain't got to go nowhere. We got, a, we got plenty of women for you, <laughs> you know. So... Then on the other hand, we got Chevelle. She in Kansas City, honey. And Chevelle is like, listen, if Quaylen ain't going to treat me right, I'll find somebody who will. Now, she done went deep, 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 deep back into her phone and found some old dude that she used to mess with. She said, we've known each other since high school. We've always been just friends. But it's always been a situation where when he's single, I'm not. When I'm single, he not. But we've always flirted. We've always had an attraction. So they ended up going out on a date. And, um... They had a good day. You know, they was flirty, flirty and everything. And she said, you know, so what did you think when you, you know, when I told you about Quaylen? And he was like, I told you you could do better. Like, I never understood why you were entertaining dating a guy, you know, um, you know, dating a guy who was in jail. Like, you could do better. And she was like, but he was saying all the right things. And we had a plan. And I thought it was going to be this. And I thought it was going to be that. And, you know, he gets out of jail and it's a whole different thing. He was like, yeah, so you really need to, you need to level up. You need to get with a boss like me. And he was like, so I can I take you out on another date? And she was like, you know, sure. So I don't know, Quayle, you might not get your boo thing back. I don't know. I don't know. You may not get your boo thing back. That's all I'm going to say about that. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments. Peace.